Hi, I'm Mark Ligo, your Oxford Lord Mayor. Welcome to Oxford City Council's Holocaust Memorial Day event. On this day, every year, we all come together to remember and learn about the Holocaust, Nazi persecution and the genocide that followed in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur in the hope there may be one day in the future with no genocide. Your attendance today is part of the national picture with thousands of activities taking place across the UK, supported by the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Holocaust Memorial Day presents an opportunity when people from all backgrounds come together and learn from the past and create a better future. It serves as a reminder that all of us not only have the ability to resist the forces of hatred, we have a responsibility to do so, and that includes everyone who has joined us today. Survivors of the Holocaust and genocide often talk about the one day when everything has changed, sometimes for the worse and sometimes for the better. And this is the theme for this year's One Day. Amazing by Michael Swack. That bit of filth in dirty walls and all around barbed wire and 30,000 souls who sleep who once will wake and once will see their own blood spilled. I was once a little child three years ago, that child who longed for other worlds. But now I am no more a child, for I have learned to hate. I am a grown-up person now. I have known fear. Bloody words and a dead day then. That's something different than boogeymen. But anyway, I still believe I only sleep today, that I'll wake up a child again and start to laugh and play. I'll go back to childhood sweet like a briar rose, like a bell which wakes us from a dream, like a mother with an ailing child loves him with an aching woman's love. How tragic then is youth that lives with enemies, with gallows ropes. How tragic then for children on your lap to say, this for the good, that for the bad. Somewhere, far out there, childhood sweetly sleeps. Along that path among the trees, there or that house, which once was my pride and joy. There, my mother gave me birth into this world, so I could weep. Into the flame of candles by my bed I sleep. Or run perhaps I'll understand that I was such a little thing, as little as this song. These 30,000 souls who sleep among the trees will wake, open an eye, because they see a lot. They'll fall asleep again. Never Shall I Forget by Eli Weasel Never shall I forget that night, the first night in camp, that turned my life into one night seven times sealed. Never shall I forget that smoke. Never shall I forget the small faces of the children whose bodies I saw transformed into smoke under a silent sky. Never shall I forget those flames that consumed my faith forever. Never shall I forget the nocturnal silence that deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget those moments that murdered my God and my soul and turned my dreams into ashes. Never shall I forget those things even were I condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. Some years ago, I had the opportunity to study in depth a module on the Holocaust. It was the first time that I had been exposed to the enormity of this horrific event just to learn about what happened 
and the process that led to the genocide of six million Jews and many other minorities had a profound impact upon me. I was left asking myself, how could this have been allowed to happen? It has been said that the Holocaust doesn't begin with the gas chambers, but with words. That the first stage of the process leading to the horrors of the Holocaust was to strip the Jewish people to their humanity, to make them the holy other. The Auschwitz Museum states, When we look at Auschwitz, we see the end of the process. It's important to remember that the Holocaust actually did not start from gas chambers. This hatred gradually developed from words, stereotypes and prejudice through legal exclusion, dehumanization and escalating violence. Each year, when we remember the victims and survivors of the Holocaust, we also remember the victims of all other genocides since, in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. It seems as if human beings have failed to learn the lessons of the Holocaust. We must renew our resolve to challenge those, whether they be individuals, groups or states, propagating divisive language, hatred or violence, towards our fellow human beings, especially those calculated to marginalise minority groups, the vulnerable and those seeking safety from persecution. We must also remember that silence, in the wake of dehumanisation and incarceration of a minority group or groups, must always be challenged. What the Holocaust teaches us is that states that embody and perpetrate such practices, if we leave unchecked, we do so at our peril. The greatest safeguard against the narratives of hatred, division and violence are our democratic ideals. Democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty, mutual respect, tolerance of those of different faiths and beliefs, these values and principles are a buttress against authoritarianism and a surest guarantee, as there can be, against those who advocate division, hatred and violence in our world. It's more than 20 years since Holocaust Memorial Day was established in Britain, originally as a means to educate young people about the genocide that occurred in Europe under the Nazis during the Second World War. Its purpose soon extended much wider than that, and now it provides a focus to remind the nation both about that particular genocide and to reflect on what's still happening in the world today and our personal responses to it. Before I go any further, I'd like to say a few words about genocide, a word that is currently used much too readily. Genocide is not murder committed on a grand scale, neither is it the natural consequence of war. It is the conscious effort by one group of people to eliminate another. It does not apply to killing an enemy's armed forces or its male population. It's concerned with killing everyone in the victim group, male and female, old and young, strong and weak. All done with the express purpose of preventing that group from existing, both at that time and in the future. During the Second World War, the victims were specifically Jews, gypsies and homosexuals. Since then, genocide has happened in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. It's still happening in parts of the world today, such as Myanmar and the Xinjiang province of China. It reminds us not only about what humanity was capable of, but also what people do to each other, even now. One of the original aims of Holocaust Memorial Day was more concerned with individual behaviour. 
to try and reduce prejudice and stereotyping in our everyday lives by demonstrating where it can ultimately lead. Without wishing to deny its value, I have to say that I wish this aim had been more successful. I was talking to a friend recently who said that she'd become very cynical about memorialising the Holocaust. The incidence of overt prejudice here in Britain has not diminished. The contempt and lack of sympathy for refugees has become almost institutionalised and the demand for keeping economic migrants out of Britain is now a feature of our political life. Her comments made me think about why I continue to feel that Holocaust Memorial Day has value. I was born in the last year of the Second World War and my early years featured talk about what had happened to the Jews of Europe. My grandparents came to Britain from Poland at the beginning of the 20th century, essentially to find a better life. But many members of their families left behind in Eastern Europe were killed. They were personally scarred by their losses, feeling so much guilt because they'd survived and their parents, siblings, grandparents and wider family had died. I also remember from my teenage years the shocking films of the liberation of the concentration camps, showing stick-thin people behind barbed wire and the diggers shoveling bodies into mass graves. I don't want those images to be forgotten, and those from later genocides. The bodies washed down rivers in Rwanda, the graveyards of Bosnia, the burning villages of Darfur, and more recently, the persecution of the Rohingya in Myanmar and the more subtle state re-education programmes and forced labour of the Uyghurs in China. I admire profoundly those who, having experienced these horrors, are prepared to talk about them. For example, those who go into schools as witnesses of the horrors of the Holocaust, whose evidence, like the tattooed numbers on their arms, cannot be eradicated. Most of the survivors of the World War II Holocaust are very old or have died. Who is going to bear witness now? For me, the real value in Holocaust Memorial Day is that it offers the opportunity to hear and to listen to the evidence which only witnesses can bring. But it's up to us, to each individual, to take that learning for ourselves and then apply it to our own behaviours to take personal responsibility for our own actions in the face of the kind of overt prejudice and discrimination that may confront us in our own lives. It's not always easy and it certainly doesn't always make you popular. I sometimes ask myself whether I would have had the courage to do what I believe to be morally and ethically right in the face of state-sponsored racism and discrimination. I simply don't know especially if it might put my life or the lives of my children and grandchildren at risk. But at a far less dangerous level, we can all apply the same principle today. What do we do if we hear racist abuse in the street aimed at a woman wearing a burqa? How do we react when we see a group of school children bullying another child in the park especially if that child is from a different ethnic group or disabled? And how can we put pressure on our politicians to try to effect changes in countries where the UN suspects that genocide is occurring? What can we, as individuals, do? So Holocaust Memorial Day provokes us to think about our individual actions against all forms of injustice, against overt racism, against verbal or physical abuse directed at specific people. Remembering on its own is not enough. It's what we do as a result that has the power to achieve change. This is a yacht site or year time candle. Left alone, it burns for 24 hours to commemorate the life of a departed soul. In the Jewish tradition, a yacht site candle is lit once a year on the anniversary of someone's death. Today we're lighting this candle to commemorate the lives of the six million Jews and five million others 
principally gypsies, but also the disabled, homosexuals, political opponents, and some people of colour. For many of us, it also serves as a memorial to victims of other genocides and carries our hopes for a better future. We pray for all those suffering from the effects of genocide and attempted genocide. We remember with sadness and shame those moments when we, or previous generations, have stood by to allow hate and prejudice, ignorance and cruelty to triumph. We remember Auschwitz and all it has come to represent. We remember Rwanda, Bosnia, Cambodia and other such evils through history. This year, as we have been asked to hold the thought one day, may God give us grace and courage, mercy and justice, that we would take each day seriously and live it well. Amen. <laughs>